Well, hi and welcome to my office. Yes, I know. I've already done a video a few days ago. <laughs> I thought I'd shove one out before I nick off to Tassie. Because I came out in the reserve this morning to do a bit of practicing with landscape photography. Get my eye back in because there's opportunities in here that maybe I hadn't noticed. So anyway, I came out, beautiful morning, had a lot of fun, trying to get something, and I was just standing near the creek there for a minute and I could hear some buzzing, some wasps, European wasps. Now I am someone who likes to look after nature as much as I can, give some back, because I, I take a lot, I take a lot of photos and film. So I thought I'd come out now and take you with me and get rid of these wasps, because that's one of my jobs that I give myself. And there's a couple other things I do around the place as well. But that's one of my main things. So camera's getting really heavy now. So I'm going to stop and I'll meet you down at the wasp nest. And I'll show you how I get rid of them. Is quite a large nest it's obviously been here for a couple of years and I've missed it somehow I walk through here every now and then checking out old agile antichinus nests see whether they've been reactivated agile in them and I've missed them somehow but normally the grass is up here so it wouldn't be that hard to miss them as you can see this time of year it's flattened off though and I'll probably normally wouldn't come through here very often at this time of year. Uh, wallabies, wombats have all pushed it down, it's dying off because we're at the end of summer now, it's now autumn. It's certainly uh, a big nest and I need to get rid of it. Now behind me, about 50 metres into the scrub there, is where I have my nesting box and I've been getting a lot of wasps coming in to get the honey. I wondered where they were coming from and obviously that's it, so that's great. It, I hate them being in the reserve. They devastate the native insects. Bees as well, we've got two hives of bees in here. Anyway, enough talking about that. I'll get rid of these. And you're probably thinking, hang on a minute, mate, you don't do it through the day. You do it at night when the nest's quiet. Well, I'm telling you, those nests, that nest, every other bloody wasp nest in the place, they stay active right through the night. 24 hours a day, they never stop. They're never quiet. And the stuff that I'm going to use to get rid of them, it's a powder and it sticks to them. So they take it into the nest, share it with the others, and they all eventually die. But it is something that is quite a dangerous thing to do. I study everything, I'm a bit of a scientist, um, it's just a natural thing in me. I like to study things and I know how to keep them calm. Just like with bees, you use a bit of the old smoke, keep them calm. It's all about how you approach them. Nice and easy, keep it simple. Put a bit of dust in, back off, put a bit more in. Anyway, you get the idea and uh, I'll get on with it. Well that was quite easy and simple wasn't it? I just waited for the nest to quieten down. I didn't want any coming up out of the nest for starters. I wanted some coming in. So I did little puffs so I didn't stir them up. As each one came to go in, a little puff, I got probably about 10 of them before there was too much dust at the entrance. 
and it uh, covered their scent. They couldn't find where the nest was at first. There's a whole heap of them, so I just let them go. They went in. Then I waited until I could see a whole heap that were going to come out. Then I hit him with a big blast. Really squeezed the bottle hard, so I got heaps down the bottom, right in, and they're coming up through all the dust, so it was great. And I've been watching them since then all come out every one of them is covered in dust so that means down the bottom like the shape of the burrows goes like that right down the bottom they have to walk through all the dust that I've put in there because uh, they can't take off at that stage it's too narrow that's working really well it's going to be gone by the morning I'm hoping it should be all dead it yeah, every one that's come out so far has been covered in dust. It's awesome. Job done. So now that my work's finished with those wasps, it's time for a bit more fun. And I'm not doing any more landscaping shots today. I'm going to film the agile anticoins at night. Because, who knows, I might get something that I haven't got. <laughs> or improve on what I already have got. So I'll be having the infrared light on the camera and uh, yeah, put in the infrared mode and get some done. But I thought I'd talk about photography while we're at it. Give you a little bit of an insight into what I do and most photographers do. And that is putting in the time. There's nothing glamorous about photography and filming of wildlife or landscape photography. The relationship between the two is pretty close, it's just the technique's different. I have to put up with 30 to 40 degrees heat with high humidity. If I want to get something, I just have to do it. I'll come home from work and go, oh, I'm not going out tonight. And that little voice in the back of your head goes, if you don't do, you don't get. So I'll get myself off the couch and I'll come out here. Freezing cold conditions during the winter. <laughs> it's just icy, horrible. Sitting there freezing, waiting for something to happen. But you've got to have that in your head. I might not get anything tonight, but it doesn't matter. I'll come back tomorrow and I'll keep trying until I get what I'm after. Because I guarantee you 99% of the time, you're not going to get anything or much. It's the way it's been for me for over those five years that I've been photographing and filming the Agile, even though I've got to know them intimately. It's just hard to get stuff, and I've got a plane going over, so I'll probably get distracted. But yeah, mozzies, leeches, there's, there's just nothing glamorous about this sort of photography at all. But I love it, even though I come home with nothing, I still love coming out here. You get to clear your mind of all the crap in your life. And not long after I come out here, I start forgetting about all that sort of stuff. And I'm just focusing on making sure that I'm going to nail the shot when it happens. Or get that bit of great bit of footage in the moment and you just forget about everything so that's what I love about photography that's what you're going to have to put up with if you want to get the best photograph the best bit of footage it's all about dedication and time putting up with the crap but eventually getting the result and sitting back and going wow <laughs> I've forgotten all about those terrible times where I've got nothing, I've got this. That's all I've got for you today. Just remember to uh, subscribe and you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you want to go and have a look at my channel and look at all the things I've already done in the past. I talk about camera accessories, camera cameras that I've bought, talk about birds in flight, flash photography during the day and at night. There's 50 videos there. There must be something there of interest to you. 
click on my icon down below, take to my channel. If you don't do, you don't get, so get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. Stay tuned for my tasty adventure. It is so close now. And I'll give you the title. It is Wildlife versus Landscape. What an awesome night. It was really worthwhile coming out into the dark. I got two agile antichinus come together. One sniffed the other one's butt. Haven't got that on film before, so yeah, that was just awesome. The only problem was I just packed up all my gear, put my audio gear away. I had to quickly get the camera going, but I got it. I got something fantastic and something unusual on film. No audio though. Bad luck for me. I had a wombat behind me scratching, two wallabies fighting with each other, so there's just all these sounds happening around me. It's what I love about coming out into the dark. You get to use your ears more than you would normally do, so it's all these beautiful sounds. Anyway, I'm going home to bed. See ya.